shields up paladins and welcome to a for honor hero guide as you can tell by the title of this video i'll be talking to you all about the shaman and how i like to use this particular character the shaman is one of the assassin characters within the viking faction she has a medium difficulty rating as well as she is a fast attacker predatory and has blood trance her base stats or her health is set to 120 her stamina is set to 140 and her sprint speed is set to 2.63 milliseconds. Now with all this being said and done, let's go ahead and jump on right on over to her feats, starting with her tier 1. Her tier 1 feats are Rush, which is trigger to gain movement speed for a short duration, Stealth, which is a passive ability, hide yourself from HUD, radar, and aim assist, and Stun Trap, set a trap that stuns and damages enemies. Her tier 2 feats are Bear Trap, set a trap that damages and stops victims in their tracks, Flush Wound, which is a passive ability, gain moderate damage reduction for every 3 seconds, and Revenge Attacks, which is another passive ability, the successful attacks when locked on fill the revenge meter. Her tier 3 feats are Fury, which is raised sprint speed slightly, attack and defense greatly, Sharpen Blade, attacks inflict low damage over time, and hand axe. Throw a hand axe for medium bleed damage. And finally for her tier 4 we have fire flask which will throw a projectile creating a fire effect over an area. Nail bomb. A trap dealing bleed damage in an area effect. And scout. All enemies are marked for death and show up on the radar. Now for her feats what I like to run of course would be stealth. Uh, for her tier 1 again as I've always said in, uh, in the past couple of videos Rush I really don't see a point in it uh, the only time that I would see it being beneficial uh, is whenever you're picking up the banner and breach um, that's really the only time I see it beneficial she's got a pretty much a very quick sprint speed already uh, so you can get the point to point pretty quick with her so I don't really see a a point in increasing that sprint speed with her um, just to get there you know quicker or, or whatnot you know that's it, it, it's kind of hit or miss I prefer stealth over that because it, it gives you more more to your kit anyways uh, stun trap I've seen some shamans run stun trap uh, it could be beneficial but again I don't like um, placing a trap and then basically just staying there waiting i feel like i could be beneficial you know running around doing something else you know or at least put it down for a teammate that's going to sit there and then run off uh that could be beneficial there but for her tier one i prefer stealth so her tier two this one is really up to user choice in my opinion i've got bear trap on it uh, simply because that I know a lot of the times um, I like to put down the bear trap just to kind of like in, if we're attacking anyways and we're trying to capture the ramparts, I'll, I'll put the bear trap like in front of a like in front of a door, like maybe before going up the stairs before they get to the objective. You know that does stop them for a short duration to allow you to capture that point, or at least to keep capturing the point while they're just stuck there for a second. Uh, then that gives you time to, of course, engage in that fight. Uh, I've seen some some use flesh wound, and I see some use revenge attacks. Like I said, those two are really up to you. Uh, if you really like revenge, then I'd say go with that. Uh, if you're more concerned about a damage reduction, keep in mind that is for every three seconds, and basically it it allows you to take another light. Basically, is what damage reduction does. Um, so that's really up to you in that particular case uh, but in this case I'm using bear trap her tier 3 now again her tier 3 is another user preference uh, because her tier 3 is very very good across the board uh, but as a shaman what I like to do is I like to stack as much bleed as I possibly can now there's a couple reasons why I like to do that so in this case Sharpen blade or hand axe would be the way to go. I'm using hand axe just because one, it's a projectile. It's something that I can throw from a distance, uh, and even while people are not paying attention, I you know I can throw that from a distance, hit them, boom. I can then jump on them before, while they're still reacting. 
to go ahead and get that bite in there and go ahead and heal and get that damage in there. Uh, Sharpen Blade, again, is another good one. Uh, you can definitely use that when going into your combos, whenever someone's spamming lights or whatnot. Uh, that's something that you can do as well. Now, Fury, again, Fury is always good, in my opinion. You know, you're raising your attack and your de defense greatly. As an assassin, raising your defense, that is great. You know, that allows you to take more damage than what you normally would do. On top of that, you're, you know, you're increasing your attack damage as well. Uh, so, uh, that doesn't necessarily stack with your bleed damage, but that also means you're doing more physical damage rather than stacking your bleed, which is always great. Uh, but in this particular case, I am using Hand Axe, uh, but her tier 3 is really up to you. Her tier 4, uh, kind of hit or miss with this one. Uh, Fire Flask is always good uh, on almost any Viking character that you can pick. But simply because she is more towards bleed side of things, I'm using Nail Bomb. Um, I like to use Nail Bomb specifically whenever, uh, right on the big guy, really. Uh, so whenever they're running up to the, to the objective to try to, you know, uh, to get ready to either put corruption on them or they're getting ready just to get ready just to fight him in general. Um, you know, I like to put the Nail Bomb right there to go ahead, try to hit a wide variety of people. Uh, so when they're all kind of bleeding, one helps the team out to get them out of the way pretty quickly. As also, you know, it, it's uh, also healing me in the process. So that is something that I like to use. Um, Scout, Scouts, yeah, okay. Uh, March for Death is, is also good. I mean, it lowers their defense, also their stamina regen. It's basically what March for Death does. Uh, and it allows them to show up on the radar. But if you're normally right at the end of Breach, or, or through the second gate, uh, or get, or I'm sorry, through the first gate, getting ready to hit to hit the second gate. Uh, so really, you know, you kind of know how everyone's going to run at that point. So scout is really kind of, yeah, you know, in my opinion for that. But I have seen some shamans run it. So that's uh, as her whole feat situation is. Uh, just to kind of recap once again, I run Stealth, Bear Trap, Hand Axe, and Nail Bomb is what I like to run. Now for her perks, uh, since I'm usually running the Ramparts, I like Devour, Remedy, and Clever Tactics. Now, Devour and Remedy, that's just giving me more health back. So the great thing about that is Devour is on the, upon the execution, but Remedy is just upon the kill. So, even if I get knocked out of the execution, I'm still okay. As I have Remedy on, I can still get that, that extra healing in on top of that just because I got the kill. Um, Clever Tactics is pretty much the same thing as Conquer, uh, but not as good. Um, so, Clever Tactics is just pretty much helps you capture the point quicker. Um, that does stack with Conquer. But you can barely, barely tell that it does anything to really help you there. Um, so if you're a shaman that doesn't like to run uh, Ramparts and Breach or anything like that, or if you're not playing Breach and want to play like Dominion or Brawl or whatever, you can swap out Clever Tactics with Endurance. Endurance is, a, is probably her other perk that I would recommend switching. Uh, switching out for clever tactics or uh, so that's something that I would do uh, if I was running my shaman on in a different game mode rather so with all that being said and done let's go ahead and jump right on over to the hero specific move set so now up on the screen right now what you're gonna see is that I went into the hero tactics and let the game pretty much tell me what it wants to teach me about the shaman uh, so up on the screen, you're going to see a lot of the combos, and I'm going to talk about some of them here within the hero specifics, kind of the ins and outs, and a little more nitty gritty information uh, that we really need about all of this, uh, all these combos and stuff like that, about our blood trans and stuff like that. So, with all that information being said, let's go ahead and jump right on into it. So now. Renown. You earn more renown in 1v1 fights by killing enemy heroes and getting kill streaks to unlock feats in a match. 
as with every assassin character you'll have the same thing across the board for all your renown whenever it comes to breach or anything like that you really don't have to worry too much because you're going to get the same across the board uh, but in other game modes yes you have to worry about that Revenge mode, where boost damage and health, all attacks are uninter uninterruptible, parries and throws, knock enemies down, attacks are all are auto parried upon activation, all that's the same nitty gritty stuff across the board, we already know about that. Since you are an assassin, you have a reflex guard, so your guard stance only remains active for a limited time, so do keep that in mind. Also, you, since you are an assassin, you have a deflect, dodge in the direction of an incoming attack, just before impact to deflect it. A deflect can be followed up with Raven's Beak. So, now here we go getting to the nitty gritty about blood trance. And here's all, a bunch of information, so get ready to buckle up for this. So, while the opponent is bleeding, the shaman enters a blood trance. Blood trance lets the shaman heal for health on every strike against the bleeding target. So, whenever whenever someone is bleeding and it doesn't even have to be your bleed it could be uh, the Naboshis it could be the Peacekeeper it could even be the Valkyries bleed it can be even the Berserkers bleed on top of that it don't matter whose bleed it is as soon as you see someone with bleeding you enter into what is called Blood Trance now anytime you hit that particular character that is or, or a successful hit on that particular character you will get healed for four health each time you hit them so keep that in mind now predator's mercy and blood trance predator's mercy replaces predator's hunger predator's mercy uses the same controls as predator's hunger but now a successful attack will pin the opponent to deal 50 damage allowing uh, along with healing 20 health and restoring full stamina for the shaman Predator's Mercy, which is the blood offering, once Shaman pins the target during Predator's Mercy, the bleed on the opponent will be removed, regardless of how much was left. Because the bleed is removed, Shaman effectively leaves blood trance for the target. Also take note that there is a brief window between the removal of bleeding and the damage slash shield slash stamina restored, allowing the opponent to intervene before the latter effects are applied. Predator's Mercy Second Chance. A missed Predator's Mercy can be linked directly into a Wildcat's Rage by pressing R2 on the PS4 uh, or into Predator's Mercy by pressing Square on the PS4. Now Predator's Mercy and Predator's uh, Hunger is her bite. That, that's, that's what I'm talking about here. So Predator's Hunger is whenever she already has not pinned down. She's biting the neck. Uh, she is going to get healed for 20 health while dealing 50 damage. Then once that happens, then boom. No matter how much bleed they had left, it's all taken away. Now, Predator's Mercy is whenever she is getting ready to initiate that jump attack, that, that, that leap that she has. So now you can go ahead and leap into it. If you grab them, great. Then now Predator's Mercy turns into Predator's Hunger. Now, if you miss your first leap attack or your first bite attempt, you can either follow this up with Wildcat Rage, which is that that dot or that jump uh, that jump heavy attack that she has, or uh, you can go into that and then cancel that back into uh, Predator's Mercy. And if you get it again, you know, then that will get, get it to Predator's Hunger. So keep that in mind. There's a lot of things you can do with the Shaman that I see a lot of people don't do. And you'll see it here within the, uh, within the Hero Tactics. So, pre-pounce. So, the Predator's Hunger slash Predator's Mercy and Wildcat's Rage holding the respective command, which is square on the PS4 for the former and R2 on the PS4 for the latter will cause the Shaman to hold a position in preparation for the pounce at no cost. Now you have your pounce mix-ups. While running towards the target, Predator's Hunger and Predator's Mercy can be cancelled into Wildcat's Rage by hitting R2 on PS4. And Wildcat's Rage, excuse me, Wildcat's Rage can be cancelled into Predator's Hunger or Predator's Mercy by pressing 
Square on the PS4. And that's just kind of reiterating what I talked about a little bit earlier. So now you have something called the chase. So if a target is outside a normal leap range while attempting Predator's Hunger or Predator's Mercy or Wildcat's Rage, the Shaman will sprint before initiating the leap. So now you have your cancels. Uh, Predator's Hunger, Predator's Mercy, and Wildcat's Rage can be canceled by pressing the circle button on the PS4. You have, of course, your guard break cancel. Heavy attacks can be canceled into a guard break, again by pressing square on the PS4. You have your dodge cancel. Heavy finishers can be canceled with a dodge by pressing X on the PS4. Zone attacks, uh, zone attack cancels can be canceled while pressing circle on the PS4 after the second strike. This also can be canceled with Raven's Bile after the second strike. So you got the Wildcat Chain Starters, Wildcat's Raids, Wildcat's Pals, and Wildcat's Swiftness counts as heavy starters flowing right into the Bile Omen chain. Wildcat's Wrath. Wildcat's Rays will strike from the same direction as the Guard, unlike the forward dash heavy attacks of other heroes that default from striking from the top guard. Mountain Lion's Power. Finish the chain with a heavy left for an unblockable, uh, slightly increased damage attack. The good blood omen. The second light attack in blood omen, if initiated from the same direction as the first, drags, uh, strikes faster but deals less damage. You have your throw shortcuts. Uh, throw can be uh, throw can shortcut to wildcat rage with R2 on the PS4, or into predator's hunger slash predator's mercy by pressing square on the PS4. And finally, smooth combos. Uh, stabs through Raven's Claw, Raven's Bile, and Raven's Beak, along with Predator's Hunger, all feature short recoveries, allowing the Shaman to start a new chain immediately. So, with all that being said, that's everything about the Shaman. And I know this video is pretty long, so I want to end it pretty much quickly as I possibly can here. But one final thing that I want to say about the Shaman is, of course, with Stealth. I like to try to focus in a lot of the 1v1 fights, or I try to focus someone that is weak. Since because she has a quick sprint speed, she can get to someone pretty quickly. Also with her jump, that initiates that pounce. If they're just a little bit out of range, that's okay. So she has that great that great pounce that she has that allows her to, to pretty much catch up to almost anybody while they're running away from you. So hence why I don't like to use Rush. I like to use stealth just because of that reason. But anyways, thank you all for watching. Hopefully I answered a lot of questions, comments, concerns about the shaman in the nutshell. Uh, if I did, great. Leave a comment down below. If I missed something, I would love to hear from you. As always, guys, thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.